Oh boy, it's him again, the Lego customizing guy. Not really actually working on a custom, but here's Boba Fett with his new custom painted head. Oh wait, gonna have to wait till the end of the vlog for that one. Speaking of vlogs, welcome back to still technically the weekly vlog. Real quick, just wanted to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's vlog and that hard cut. And of course, if you haven't already heard of them by now, you probably have. Skillshare is a very big online learning community with literally thousands of really inspiring classes for creative types, especially like us and really for anyone. Honestly, Skillshare is a really special and accessible and like welcoming platform for a variety of reasons. But really, I just think that anyone can appreciate learning more about what you're interested in on your own time. All classes are blocked up into really short lessons too, so it really is accommodating. And I've mentioned it before, but there are a handful of YouTubers on there too with their own classes that do go into a lot more depth than they usually have time for over here with their channels on YouTube. In our space, photo editing and video editing are obvious ones. If you wanna get started with 3D printing, which is gradually making hand sculpting work in the LEGO customizing community pretty obsolete, there's a variety of really good beginner's blender classes on Skillshare share as well. And as a member, you get unlimited access to all of these classes. There are no ads. They're always releasing new classes, of course. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down in the description below will get a free trial of one month of one month of one month of free Skillshare premium. I need to see if uh, I, they have any classes on how to be a YouTuber. I think I've been at this shit for 13 years too long. All right, so getting started here, we have Phoenix Customs brand new Iron Spider minifigure from Avengers Infinity. You know what movies it's from. And you can see this is by far the best Iron Spider minifigure that has ever been made and easily his best among the lineup of Spider-Man minifigures that he's also made over the years because not only is this just incredible, of course, with its usual, you know, fantastic design work, but Adam here has coated this entire figure in a shiny red finish unlike anything previously seen before i think he's done it maybe on like the infinity war iron man before this but i mean this is just one of a kind i am blown away by what he has achieved here this is just i mean this lighting doesn't do it justice, which is why I am excited to review it at some point in the near future. It also has these custom gauntlet pieces with these integrated little printed lights within them. I mean, this is just so impressive and so amazing. It just uh, really has blown me away. And you also have the instant kill alternative head included here, and then a brand new Tom Holland head, which I think definitely gets a little bit closer to Tom Holland's likeness than the previous head. And this is the I don't feel so good face, as of course he's getting snapped away and erased from existence. You have a little teardrop part of that design. I mean, this is the definitive Iron Spider package. Of course, getting pincers at some point in the near future would be cool but you really just don't need them because this minifigure like I said really already is the full package just with what is offered here this went up for pre-order way back in January and has not disappointed this is why I always say with every Phoenix custom figure that I review it's always worth it to get those pre-orders in because eventually way down the road when these do eventually ship once the process is complete it is always worth it and Adam really never misses I mean I'm being totally honest in saying so and it's really cool to see how far he has come in the last few years to be able to offer a minifigure like this because you take a look at the original Iron Spider that he did a few years ago before this was possible and I mean it is just so so cool this minifigure still is amazing for what it's worth and this is just built upon it this is so impressive and so high quality and hands down one of the best minifigures that I own now and I'm very excited to talk more about it 
in the near future. Let me know if you guys think I should also review his Into the Spider-Verse Miles Morales in the same video. I'm thinking about doing another like double review and just hitting two birds with one stone and just kind of celebrating No Way Home and the multiverse by uh, pairing those two together for the same video. But uh, each of these releases have just continued to make my original Infinity War Iron Spider that I painted way back in 2018 look like absolute now heading back over to a new development for my Mandalorian season two showcase. Check this out. We've got Boba Fett on his throne now. And this is something that I wasn't really planning on doing until they unveiled the first poster for the book of Boba Fett. And then I decided, okay, my Boba Fett minifigure that I'm working on needs a throne for this showcase. And so taking some direct inspiration from Blocks Mag, I threw this together in Bricklink Studio in like an hour and then ordered all of the parts and they finally showed up and I threw it together pretty recently here and I think it looks so so cool and I really cannot wait to set up a Fennec Shan minifigure right here on the edge as well. Unfortunately the eBay seller that I ordered that minifigure from is taking forever and I just really hope that she'll get here in time for the video because uh, I don't plan on making a custom Fennec Shan myself since Legos is so good um, but yeah. Okay now this is going to be the random portion of the vlog or in other words collectibles and Lego sets that I've been anticipating for months that have finally started to roll out and uh, release in this past week and make it here or at least arrive here and we've got the uh, spider-man no way home sanctum spider-man at the sanctum workshop i can never remember the names that lego puts on these sets anymore um but very excited about this set obviously and i'm probably not going to review it though because i feel like the ship has already sailed on that one but regardless i'm excited for those minifigures in particular not necessarily thrilled about the build even though all of the accessories do look fun and then what else uh we've got Captain Carter here from the What If series. Check that out. She just came in from GameStop pretty recently and that's honestly one of the best and like most colorful and vibrant looking Marvel Legends figures that has come out this year and it's actually even better in person than I was expecting. And in that same order, got the Endgame Infinity Saga Thor figure, which is awesome. Still not a huge fan of how Thor was handled in Avengers Endgame, but seeing how Hasbro is probably not going to make another Infinity War Thor figure for the Infinity Saga up updated uh, line. I decided to just kind of settle on this and still pick it up uh, regardless and it is a phenomenal figure even if I'm not super jazzed about that interpretation of the character to this day. Oh my god. So many words. Uh, we've also got, speaking of the Infinity Saga, one more figure from that line. We have uh, Avengers Infinity War Steve Rogers, which is also a little bit better in person than I was expecting. Hair is a little bit too dark, but thankfully the likenesses on really both heads are pretty solid and do look pretty close to Chris Evans. So surprisingly impressed with that figure. And can you see, no you can't, but I do have the Marvel Legends Thanos figure actually like out of the packaging um, up on that shelf. And uh, he was in the room tour video and you've probably seen him in the background. Maybe if you look really closely in other vlogs. Um, but I might actually open that Captain America to do the uh, Wakanda scene recreation where Steve is holding Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet back for a brief moment, which is still iconic. And then we also do have um, tech. Kind of a dud to end this segment, I'm not gonna lie, because uh, this figure is very cool, but also unfortunately a little bit disappointing because for whatever reason, um, Hasbro could not give us a separate pair of goggles to put on him when the helmet is off. So he just looks really, really creepy. And it's, it's, it's kind of, it's mildly horrifying. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's a very creepy head sculpt without the goggles. And so uh, good figure though, otherwise I think, and I'm happy that he did at least finally show up. Is that it? I think that's it. Well, uh, actually, oh, <laughs> this is pretty wild. Got uh, Rosario Dawson, Ahsoka, Funko Pop, and check this out. We also got uh, Bo-Katan. Found these with my buddy Jake while we were uh, toy hunting at Target a few days back. And this is just wild. Not because getting Funko Pops is really like anything out of the ordinary, but because these are the first ever Funko Pops for live action interpretations of Ahsoka Tano and Bo-Katan, which is still not something I take for granted. So this is still pretty freaking wild. And then I saw all of these Infinity Saga and Marvel sets and uh, Star Wars sets to review like the Bad Batch shuttle in there and uh, I am getting buried alive. Help.
Okay, now back to the Lego. I did already post this over on Patreon a little bit ago and I figured I would get everyone set up back there for this just because I kind of failed to show you guys much of anything in the last couple of vlogs with the Mandalorian Season 2 showcase. But here we have got Boba Fett not just with his new head and all of the scars and burn marks, but that is a wrap on the figure now. Since recording that clip where I showed you this brick built throne for the first time, I painted up the entire Tamira Morrison head with all of Boba Fett's scars and everything. And I finished the legs, added the final holster to his right thigh and everything. And the figure is done except for his EE3. And I still need to acquire a proper brick arms over molded, or I guess reloaded um, EE3 from Eclipse Graphics site. And then I'm gonna add my own uh, painted detail onto the stock and some other things probably. But for now, that is a finished figure right there. I mean, well, not technically because I have official Lego dark brown legs on them for the moment because the actual custom legs can't be seated like that, unfortunately, with the sculpting work I've got going on. But that's okay. And it really doesn't even change anything because you can barely even see the blank dark brown legs there. And yeah, I mean, I still have a lot of work to do on wrapping up Ahsoka, mostly with her legs in their entirety and some laces I have to do on the back and I have to finish up her waist cape and probably redo her lightsabers unfortunately and also Cosca Reeves and Axe Woes are still back here with a blank pair of legs so they definitely need some work done um, but those legs on them will mostly be blank anyway and all I'm really going to do is glue on their knee pads and then kind of start the stitching marks going up so what I mean by that is I'm not going to do all of these like you see here with bo tan but I will at least start them off so if I ever wanted to go ahead and continue these two custom minifigures I could do that and those stitching marks will already be there in place because that's just like kind of one of the things that has to be painted first with some of the Mandalorian minifigures in some areas you have to account for those stitching marks and paint them on first before gluing things like knee pads in place and just you know there is an order to these things as you go through the process of making custom minifigures and you definitely learn that very quickly of course and I've been doing this since 2008 so it's nothing new for me but I still think it's an interesting thing to mention nonetheless but yeah let me know what you think of that head down in the comments I am obviously slowly moving toward the finish line here and I'm excited to finally wrap up my Rosario Dawson Ahsoka Tano and really get to work on this video but I mean you know still gotta wrap up those half customs of those mandos too like I mentioned so um you know I <laughs> like I think I said in the previous vlog a while a little while back I might have like posted the final update video just a little bit prematurely, but I thought that it was necessary just to kind of keep things moving and make sure that I kind of put a timeline on it to wrap this up as soon as possible. And uh, for the most part, I've been doing so and it's going pretty, pretty well. So um, with that, I think we can go ahead and uh, start to wrap up the vlog. All right, so I wanted to end the vlog with some, uh, we're actually, hang on a second. Real quick, I wanted to uh, actually show you. I got Mobius. Check this guy out. Look at this dude. There he is, Owen Wilson. Wow, really great guy and a really great figure with a really solid likeness. But I'm not an action figure reviewer, so you can look up better pictures of it somewhere else. That's Target exclusive, by the way, so that's pretty cool. Got that over there. Uh, Sight to store is a great thing. I saw James Bond, No Time to Die, and it was amazing. It was honestly, to me, like watching a definitive James Bond concluding movie. And no spoilers, of course, but it actually kind of bugged bums me out a little bit that I sort of have missed this generation of James Bond. It kind of occurred to me that, um, you know, going into this movie, I really never did see Casino Royale or Quantum of Solace. So, um, you know, and I don't remember shit about Skyfall, barely anything about Spectre. So going into this movie, I was missing a lot of the emotional weight Right, I'm familiar with the characters generally, um, and I'm there for it, and, and totally in support of Daniel Craig, who, in my opinion, is the definitive James Bond right up there with legends like Sean Connery. But, I mean, what a remarkable experience of a film to finally get to experience after it was delayed from like last spring in early 2020 when it was originally supposed to come out. They've just been sitting on it ever since the pandemic began and it's been a really long time since they shot it and put the whole movie together but it is no less impressive with a couple of years added on. I mean 
I, I, I don't really want to go and, and like be redundant in, in offering all my thoughts, but I mean, it's just all shot so incredibly well. The, the, the classiness of the cast, the performances are all so solid. And, um, you know, I, I just really did appreciate how they checked every box, but in a really natural way as the movie progresses. I, I wish that Rami Malek's character was just a little bit better. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more out of uh, the final villain in uh, Daniel Craig's Bond saga, but I mean, it's just always so awesome to me when an actor comes up at the end of a long run in an iconic role, whether that's Hugh Jackman as Wolverine or Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man or Daniel Craig as the iconic James Bond of our generation, it's just so cool when you can close the book. That's never something to be taken for granted because you never know if that will ultimately be taken away prematurely. It happens all the time. I mean, take a look at the DCEU. You just never know. And so I actually, now I'm kind of conflicted if I want to go catch Shang-Chi in theaters again or um, James Bond. I might just do both, actually. Yeah, let me know what you guys thought of uh, James Bond, No Time to Die. I'm gonna go, though. So thank you so much for watching this vlog. Again, I apologize that it was a little bit late again, but still technically, the weekly vlog. It's Ross, the MGF custom customizing guy who uh, finishes customs sometimes. Welcome back to the weekly vlog. <laughs> of course, if you hadn't already heard of them by now, the. As a member, you get unlimited.